Hey guys, John Conley here, UncleJohnSoap.com. Wow, look at me. Another video in less than a week. Just thought I'd pop in and have a little chat with you guys today. But instead of just staring at my fat ugly face i'm gonna let you guys watch me cut some soap while we chit chat about a couple things that kind of got under my skin this week nothing major as you guys know i don't get super worked up unless it's for dramatic effect for the camera and start yelling most of the time i really don't care that much not that i don't care let's let me rephrase that i don't let things bother me to the point where i'm going to be freaked out and ticked off to the point where I can't get anything done and live the rest of my life. So my wife says, oh, you just don't care. You know, if something bad is happening, you know, the car is breaking down or whatever. No, it's not that I don't care, but panic and doesn't, not only doesn't solve your issue, it actually makes things worse. Guy logic, whatever, call it what you want. All right, let's cut some soap and chat. Oh, forgive me. I don't have a tripod. I know. I get a C minus for being unprepared, but we're going to figure out how to put you guys down somewhere where you can see the mold and not stare at my gut. Maybe, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Well, I couldn't get the gut out of the picture, but I think we'll be all right. Sorry. We're going to cut some soap while I talk. Like I just said, right now we're getting ready to cut pumpkin spice. By the way, these have been invaluable. Index cards are cheap. And I keep a stack of them. <laughs> I keep a whole stack with different scent names. Uh, some of them have the ratios written on them of what fragrance or additives that we put in them. And, uh, you know, you use them until they get too nasty and then you write a new one and chuck the old one out. But um, I like these because, you know, there's, there's two of us making soap in here. So, you know, sometimes you come in and something looks... You know, like this, most of the time I can tell that's pumpkin spice. But we do make a couple others that have vanilla or vanillin content that will darken up as well. And, you know, sometimes if your smeller's broke because you just walked into the shop and your, your senses are overwhelmed, you can't always tell what's what right away. And it's just nice at a glance. I know that this is pumpkin because this card is with it. As long as the person making the soap didn't go brain dead. And I don't have to worry about it. And when I cut it, same thing. I stack the bars, put my little card with it, and the card stays with the batch until it's wrapped in its final packaging. And then you know what it is anyway. Just a little tip there, guys. Sorry for the shaky camera. If you could just, if you could only see the rig that I just made up to hold the camera, you would laugh. So I poured these yesterday afternoon. It's been a, eh, not quite 24 hours. So, <laughs> I, I get messages once in a while from people. Sometimes they're, they're private messages. Sometimes they're emails. Sometimes they're just a comment on a video. And I got one the other day, and this is one that I get more than you would think. Or well, maybe not. Maybe you are wondering why I don't get more of them. But... The question is, why don't you wear a net over your beard? A hair net, basically, for your beard. They make them just for beards. Um, or you can modify a hair net, a true hair net for your head to work with your beard. Either way works. And uh, the, the short answer to that is because uh, I don't want to. The longer answer, while not much more complicated, 
<laughs> well, maybe it is. I'll make it complicated because that's what I do. I overcomplicate things sometimes. As much as I talk about keeping things simple, sometimes, sometimes I do that. That'll darken up nicer over the next couple days. So anyway, this one young lady, woman, asked me why I don't wear a beard net. It creeps her out. Hopefully you can hear me all right while I'm stacking. It creeps her out that I am working with this soap and making bath and body stuff with my beard just hanging out in the breeze and potentially shedding in people's soap. And I guess I can understand that to a point. And of course, she prefaced this with, you know, she's a nurse, so of course she knows that hair self-sheds. Well, of course it does. All hair and skin sheds. Your nails shed. That's why they grow. Um, things like that. <sighs> well, no, that's a little different. But anyway, too much sidetracking. Hair self sheds. So there's a good chance that my beard hair is going to end up in her bar of soap. Well, I'm not going to say that it's not ever going to happen or that it's impossible. It is entirely possible that a beard hair could end up in soap. But, no more so than a hair off the top of your head, a hair off of your forearm, and no offense to some of you ladies out there, I've seen some of your arms, and it's not, this is a genetic thing, it's not, you know, nobody's making fun of you. But you guys have arm hair too, some more noticeable than others. And I've seen a lot of soap makers who don't wear a net over their head. They don't wear long sleeves. They don't cover their entire face. You have eyebrows and eyelashes. They self-shed too. And to be quite honest, if a beard hair does fall, and I don't, I don't think this has ever been an issue for me, but if it does fall and... It does happen to go into the soap. Two things. One, it's not food. Yes, I know you use it on your body, but it's not food. It is totally different. Not even close to being the same classification. While there are some best practices, things you want to try to pay attention to, I wash my hands before I touch the products and things like that. Uh, you know, I don't lick your soap before I package it and send it, things like that. It seems a little silly to me that people will only worry about the guy with the beard, but not the lady who, you know, keeps sweeping her forehead with, you know, wiping the sweat off her forehead with her forearm, um, you know, brushing her bangs back, things like that, with no protection over said woman's head. Or guys, but I, you know, I watch mostly, I mean, let's be honest, there are guys in this field slash hobby, but it's mostly women, and that's fine. Not a, not a thing wrong with either way. Except that people don't seem to worry about the head from someone's hair, or bleh, the hair from someone's head, or their eyebrows, or their eyelashes, or their forearm hair, things like that. This one's lemongrass. And this one, lemongrass tends to sweat quite a bit when it's in the mold liner. So, what we generally have to do when I pick this up is sop up some of that residue from fragrance and whatever because it's pretty slick
And sometimes I'll take this, the log out of the mold and just let it sit for a couple hours so that it has a chance to dry off a little bit before I cut it, but not always. So anyway, back to the hair. It just amazes me that, you know, some of the things that people worry about and, and kind of decide that that's the, the hill they're going to die on. Uh, quite honestly, if you want to get really technical about it, if you're going to worry about my beard hair, which is no dirtier than the hair on somebody's head, their eyelashes, their forearm hair. You know, most of us, when we wash our hands, we're not washing all the way up to our elbows like surgeons every time. Well, what, what makes one any dirtier than the other? And feel free to comment down below on that. I mean, everybody's got their opinions, and that's fine. Opinions don't make fact. Yeah, sure, I'll admit, a hair could get in there. Never found one. Never had anybody say they found one. And I am very careful to watch what I'm doing and try not to lean over things, yada, yada, yada. I try to be cautious about it. But unless you're going to totally wrap yourself in saran wrap or whatever to keep your other bodily hairs off of and out of Bath and Body products, why am I supposed to worry more about my beard than that? I'm open to listen. You might change my mind, you might not. But, you know, let's use a little logic here. That brings me to another point. If you're worried about contamination, things like that, why don't you guys cover your nose, your eyes, and your mouth, and etc. The eyes might be a little silly, except for your own self-protection when you're making soap. They're not just going to start most of the time squirting out fluids. But your nose and your mouth? Sure. Everybody's worried about droplets. <laughs> Especially since COVID came along, everybody is a droplet expert. Well, if you're worried about beard hair, what about when you exhale? and you send out water droplets, whether it's a saliva gland or, you know, the fact that you over enunciate a T when you speak or something like that, tell me what's the difference there? Nothing. You don't see the saliva in the product. So therefore, people don't seem to freak out about it. It's not required in most restaurants in most states to have any kind of a face covering to keep you from inadvertently getting saliva in somebody's food or bodily fluids. You telling me when people cook over the grill or the fryer or the whatever, or prepping plates or serving your plates, other than now with COVID, normally they wouldn't have a face covering on, would they? What's the difference? And if there is one, with logic, with medical backup, scientific backup, what would that logic be? And why isn't it practiced in any other industry? I'm open to listen. I'm not open to having my, my chops busted just for the sake of having my chops busted. This one's menthol. I have two loaves of this, and some of you guys know, some of you don't. We um, Our retail loaves are a half of one of our the loaves we actually pour. It gets a little confusing for those that don't work here, but our retail loaves are a 12-bar equivalent which is a half of one of these. It's just easier to sell price point wise, uh, packaging wise. So what I'm cutting right here, this 12 bars is a loaf. This six bars is a half loaf. 
So yeah, I just, you know, I just wanted to gripe a little bit about that and put it out there for you guys. You know, what do you think? You know, a lot of you guys make, make product too. Now, I mean, and, and I'm sure it'll be all over the map. I mean, I know some people when it comes to personal protection, some people will suit up like, you know, they just walked out of the, the SpaceX getting ready to step foot on Mars and, uh, they will overprotect themselves and that's fine. You know what? Better to overprotect than underprotect, I guess. And it's personal choice. You know, you take responsibility for your own safety. I take responsibility for my own safety. If I do something stupid because I wasn't, you know, thinking right or I didn't feel like preparing a certain way, I take responsibility for it. I'm not going to run right out and sue some other company because I did something stupid. That, that's my problem. So, anyway, what was the other thing? Oh, yeah, the lie to be. <laughs> this is funny. So, here we go again. I did a video a while back, and if I can remember, I'll try to put a link somewhere to our video uh soap without lie is a lie what did i call that is that what i mean that one anyway it's all about you know if you don't have lie you don't have soap you can't make soap without lie yada yada and i'm sure some of you guys have heard this before and there will always be a small percentage of people and again i'm not over sweating this guys i mean you know it is what it is. I could ignore it, but that doesn't help the numbers on my YouTube channel. So I choose to speak about it. Again, not overworked up, not going to hang on to it forever, but I do like to address it from time to time. See how easy that is? You take the card, you put it with your soap. Then no matter who's wrapping, who's preparing, who's shipping, until it has its full-time label on it, it's just so easy to tell. If you take two seconds and use your little index card, and it's recycling, it's you know reusing. Those cards last a good long time. So for a 50 cent pack of you know 100 plus index cards, it's money well spent. So anyway, had a lady, two of them in a row the other day. And this is why I'm addressing it, because like I said, there was two back to back. And I thought it was the same woman just trolling me, but it's not. They're from totally separate places. Uh, yeah, it's definitely not a troll account. So <laughs> one of them said there was an old Palestinian guy who for so for years... And, you know, it's his family recipe, so I'd be willing to bet it goes back at least 100 years. Makes soap with baking soda, water, and olive oil. And I'm paraphrasing this woman's statement. And then she says, she finishes with, so yes, you can make soap without lye. Well, no, you can't. <laughs> uh... Let's get something straight. And I didn't make this 100% clear in my other video. You know, hey, we all make mistakes. And sometimes one of my mistakes is not making things clear enough. Even though I say, you know, several thousand words in a video, half of which are the word you know. Which I, I'm trying to get better, guys. I know it sucks sometimes listening to me ramble. Anyway... Sometimes I don't make things abundantly clear. And the word lie is not just for sodium hydroxide. The word lie is not just for potassium hydroxide. Because quite honestly, when soap making first started, and there's debate on exactly how that came to be, but we won't go there today. 
when it first started, there was no sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. Sorry about that. Had a couple customers come in right in the middle of the, my rambling. So like I was saying, soap's done being cut, by the way. So you got to stare at me. Um, back when soap making first started, the, the term lye really didn't mean anything. It was, you know, it was potash, potash. Depends on where you're from, how you say it. But basically it was wood ash. You soak it in water. Actually, originally they put the wood ash right in there, right in the soap, just like black soap. Um, and then they started learning that they could let it steep in water, drain the water off, mix that with their fats. Ta-da, you got soap. So basically the term lye refers to a strong alkali. Baking soda is an alkali. Well, but it's not very strong alkali. You can use plain baking soda, but there's you'd have to cook your soap hot process for days in most cases, depending on the size of your batch. I mean, the, the Palestinians and the Syrians who, who do things similarly um, with certain soaps, certain companies, I don't want to paint anybody with that broad of a brush, but when they're using the baking soda, they are cooking their soaps at a pretty decent temperature for days on end until they finally pour it out. Now they pour theirs on a waxed or plastic sheeted um, floor and trial it out just like pouring concrete and then they cut it into bars later that you know the next day or the day after that and then emboss it i'm sure you guys have seen some of the videos in most cases if you're going to try to use baking soda you want to you want a stronger alkali a stronger base so what you're going to do is you're going to bake your baking soda in an oven i'm not going to tell you how to do that in this video i'll show it in another video um and what that does is it changes the, the chemical composition and you actually end up with sodium. Like, so baking soda is sodium bicarbonate. After you've heated it for a certain amount of time at a certain temperature, you end up with sodium carbonate, which if you're paying any kind of attention is washing soda. So it's the same thing until you've changed it by adding heat and time. So now sodium carbonate actually comes up on the pH scale uh, as far as being alkali, alkaline. Um, and that actually gets very close to sodium hydroxide on the scale. And I would still use hot process. I wouldn't try to cold process with um, baking soda or washing soda, but it can be done. Um, but it's still in the lye category. Lye just means a strong alkali, strong base that will help you turn your fats into the salt that is soap. It's saponification. So do a little research, decide for yourself. It's not worth it, in my opinion. You're gonna have to use more of it too, by the way. You're gonna have to use more product to turn it into soap. And to me, Sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide are um, the most efficient at turning fats and oils into soap, whether it's cold process or hot process. Just wanted you guys to, to know about that. So share your thoughts about A, covering your hair when you're making soap. I understand. It might freak people out. They say, oh man, that beard hair could fall right off of there. Well, it can and does. But again, so do your eyebrows, so do your eyelashes. The hair on your arms. I mean, mine's not super thick, but I mean, I've noticed arm hairs coming off before. Skin. You're sloughing skin constantly. Your body is constantly losing skin. Do you cover your arms, your neck, your face so that you don't shed skin into your products? I doubt it. There may be a few of you, but like I said, those are also the people that suit up like they're going into space. So let me know your comments down below, your thoughts, your opinions. You know, maybe I'm full of it, maybe I'm not, but I've never had a complaint, never had a problem. I use enough of my own product and I have enough other customers that, you know, trust me, they'd let me know if they found a beard hair in their soap. I'd hear it pretty quick. Um, and then the other thing with the, you can't make soap without lye and people keep wanting to argue. Yes, you can. You can make soap without lye. Well, no, 
If you're not using a strong alkali to make your soap, then you're making a detergent or something else, but it's not soap. Soap is a very specific term. You can look that up too, saponification. It's very specific. It's about the process and the end result. So, all right, guys. Hope you have a great afternoon, and uh, maybe next time we'll actually make some soap. Real soap. With lye.